All right, hello guys. How's it going? In today's video, we're going to be taking a very long range look at the upcoming pattern throughout the months of September and the months of October. Uh, we're going to talk about when it could be warmer than normal and when it could be much colder than normal as well during the months of September and October, like I said before. Anyway, before we get straight into things, be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. For today's comment of the day, I want to know which fall month is usually your favorite, September, October, or November. Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Also, give me a good reason why, by the way. Let's get straight into things. All right, now, first things first, we're going to be taking a look here at our CFS daily model, or our CFS extended model, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, now, this one, we're taking a look at five-day increments. Keep in mind that throughout this video, we are taking a very long-range, low-confidence look at what this model is calling for. Also, what the teleconnections could look like moving forward. Uh, the highest confidence is obviously going to be the first 20 days. Uh, so, the rest of September is going to be kind of moderate confidence that we do have some handle on what the pattern could look like. But as we move towards, you know, days 30, 40, that's when you start to get a little... A little out there you know what I mean but we're gonna take a look at it anyway uh, just with that discretion in mind keep that in mind for sure this first one here we're taking a look at is September 11th to September 16th and that reminds me that it is September 11th today uh, obviously today is a day of remembering those horrible horrible things that happened I can't even believe it has already been 20 years today marks 20 years absolutely wild hold your loved ones very very closely today uh, as you know you never know in life you never know in life with that being said let's talk about the weather though september 11th to september 16th the pattern does look kind of warm the further north north you go there the gulf coast there as you can see all the way to the southeast coast we do have some colder than normal conditions as well as along the west coast now, this is a developing negative PNA that we're going to take a look at that is going to be around for the short term. But once we take a look at the long range outlook, you will see that we do actually expect the possibility for a positive PNA. That's why that is in the thumbnail. Now, if you look at the past, I don't know, six months, maybe even the entire year, overall, we've mostly had a positive PNA because a lot of people are like, why do you always have positive PNA in the thumbnail? Well, 75% of the time, there has been a positive PNA. So that's why 75% of the time in my temperature-based thumbnails, that's what's going to be there. But we see warmer than normal conditions kind of for the plains, a little bit of the Rockies and Ohio Valley as well. Let's move this towards the next five-day period, the 5th through the 10th, 16th through 21st of September. Already, this is just 10 days from now on the 21st, we'll already be... Uh, two-thirds of the way through September approaching October. It's important to mention, by the way, that your, your actual high temperatures are lowering on average every couple of days. Uh, and actually, a great resource that I've found, and this is interesting because I usually don't like them, uh, but a great source for finding your average temperature on, on a yearly basis is AccuWeather, actually, if you go to their monthly chart. Uh, and it'll just tell you each day what your average temperature is it's important to not pay attention to their actual forecast that goes out like 60 days uh, to actually give you a weather type and temperature forecast because let me tell you if you asked me what's the weather going to be like on october 11th what's the temperature going to look like and what kind of weather could we expect there is not an there's not a resource out there that could give you any information as it pertains to what the actual exact weather would look like. Now, we could tell you if there could possibly be below normal or above normal temperatures or below normal or above average precipitation, but there is no way to even give a legitimate answer to what the exact weather would look like. That's why I have no idea why they do their daily forecasts so far out. I think it's just to, I, I don't know, I don't want to say anything on it. I don't trust it, neither should you. But Looking at that monthly chart, it does give you a good idea of what your average temperatures are, and you'll see how quickly they drop this time of year. So it's important to note that even if you have above normal temperatures, on September 21st, that's a lot different than August 21st if you're having, you know, two or three degrees above normal. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to move on towards uh, the teleconnections, take a look at that, and then we're going to take a look at the days 10 through 15, 20 through 25, 25 through 30, and beyond. Now, I realize I'm moving kind of slow, so we're going to actually speed things up here. PNA. 
All right, in its negative phase, we see below normal temperatures on the west coast. And in its positive phase, we see above normal temperatures on the west coast. The opposite goes for the eastern United States. In its negative phase, we see warmer than normal conditions. And in its positive phase, we actually see some colder air. This is our European Ensemble model. It keeps it negative all the way through about the 20th, and then we see it begin to rise up positive towards neutral or positive. This is crucial. That is a pattern flip right there that this model is indicating around 20th. That would be the, the date we uh, indicate there. We are in a positive PNA right now, headed negative, and it's going to be negative for quite a while, at least about 7 to 10 days. Arctic oscillation in its positive phase, warmer than normal conditions. In its negative phase, colder than normal conditions. You can see this one pops positive as well in the short range and then slowly trends more and more negative as we head towards the 25th, which is the end of this model run on the very right side of your screen. NAO is very similar to the AO. It does similar things and it usually looks about the same. And in this case, it does look about the same. Pops positive, heads further negative as time goes along. Now let's take a look here at the 10th through the 15th, okay? And this is kind of the peak of the cold in the west and the warmth in the east. And this is right around when the European model indicates that the, that the PNA should be rising up and heading towards positive. So usually you allow for a little bit of a lag there, about five days. So even if it goes positive, it's gonna take a while for all of those things to take place. So this is an interesting, interesting frame and this takes us almost to the end of September with a more summer-like pattern. Uh, and colder than normal in the West, which I'm sure they're very much so enjoying. But as we take a look through the 20th through the 25th, take a look at that big, big, big time flip here uh, from what we were seeing on the 21st through the 26th, now to October 1st through October 6th. Definitely seeing some warmer than normal conditions kind of head in for the Western United States and the Central and Eastern United States, mostly cold. The one thing I will mention is this is days 20 through 25, obviously very long range. So we're going to want to take this with a grain of salt moving forward. But there is some model indications in the short range that would support this model indication in the long range to be taking place. That positive PNA switch, that negative AO, that negative NAO, that would support this type of a scenario. So this isn't just kind of going in blind. We do have some information and some uh, things to go based off of that would say this actually is a possibility moving forward. So confidence is a little higher than it would typically be in this range, but it's still not super high. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on and we're gonna take a, a look at some of the more extended range still and work our way a little bit through October and see what this model is saying. All right, now here we are taking a look at the 6th through the 11th. And as you can see, we really get some cold temperatures in the east and a little bit of warmth out west, but even some colder temperatures out west. The one thing with a longer range ensemble model like the CFS model is it begins to average out. And you can see that there's some things that don't look right, uh, like west, cold in the west and the east typically is very rare. Uh, but this model is saying that's possible. Likely it has a few members calling for cold in the west, warm in the east, a few members calling for cold in the east, warm in the west, and it really just messes up the whole thing. Short range ensemble models are awesome. I, I think they're the best in the world to go based off of because they're more averaged out. They're more uh, realistic usually. But anyway, let's move towards the 30th, or sorry, the 11th through the 16th, days 30 through 35 here. And we can see that there is a bit of a warm up that returns for the east, a bit of a cool down that returns for the west. But by the time we reach the 16th through the 21st, the next five day period, you can see that it kind of recycles back into a cold in the east pattern warm in the west pattern once more so overall september looks to continue as a warmer month overall uh, we're already a third of the way through obviously at the 10th or sorry the 11th today but uh it looks like it could continue to be a warmer month uh, moving forward especially over the next you know seven to ten days like i said before there is the possibility that the the pre the, the last 10 to 5 days of the month could be colder than normal I am eyeballing that possibility based on the teleconnection outlook. Uh, but overall, October so far, based off of what we have to go based off of, uh, it looks like it could be a colder month for the East for sure uh, and a bit of a positive PNA pattern. All right. Now, here is our confidence tab. We're at a three out of six, obviously, a very long range outlook here today. Not even an outlook, a model guidance update. Um, and that's going to lower my confidence a bit. Typically, without that teleconnection support, if we didn't have the AO, the NAO, the PNA showing colder temperatures in the east, 
and we were kind of going in blind based off of what the CFS is just saying, we would probably be at a one or a two. But with that teleconnection support, we've moved up to a three from what would typically be lower. For today's comment of the day, I encouraged you guys to get a little bit more specific with it and answer my question more directly. Uh, and a lot of people did so, so I'm very happy about that. So be sure to do it for today's comment of the day as well. For to yesterday's comment of the day, I asked you guys, which tropical system out there do you think is the biggest threat right now? And Frollo said, I think that the one that is right off the Guatemalan coast is the biggest present threat due to slow motion over land uh, that is possible in the warm waters. Uh, and that is very possible. You know, the Gulf is very warm. The Caribbean is very warm. And this storm could have an easy time developing. We're going to need to watch it fairly closely as it moves into some dangerous territory. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lerla LePan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Fligo, Gary, John Khaleesi, Dwight Phelan, and Stephen Crenenthal. If you'd like to be a part of this very awesome Patreon page and patron entry of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I'd also like to thank our channel members, whether Top Dogs, Hair Farms 1, Catbite, Steven Fan, and, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.